Hi, I'm Rob Taylor, author of the article you're currently reading, the second part of the music shoot. This is where we introduce the instrument. So we have Brad with his bass and an amp. The amp that he hadn't already sold to get another more expensive guitar. Again, we're going with the classic timeless studio portraiture look. So for this, I have just white seamless. It's hard to go wrong with white seamless. If we look at the camera raw settings, it's the same as last time. Default lens direction, white balance, exposure tweak, clarity tweak, boom, done. As you can see, it's kind of falling off the edge of the world a bit there, but while I could use this little leveling tool here, there isn't really anything to level against. So I'm not going to bother in camera raw. I'll do that later. And that's it. So let's go into the PSD. Here we have the initial image. Uh, keeping it black and white. Same as the rest of the project. So silver effects is the first up. Boom. Uh, I've straightened it, just kept tweaking the uh, free transform tool until I felt like he was overall the, the, the angles looked like he was more or less sitting upright uh, on a flat surface. Uh, silver effect settings looks like I've used an orange color filter based on the, the lightness of the guitar and skin right there. Difference in luminance from the color version. Looks like I've pu pulled up a lot of the blacks and shadows regions to keep the whole image in a sort of lighter, high key kind of tone to suit the aesthetic of the white seamless background. I've clearly added a lot of, uh, what's the word, structure, I've added plenty of structure to bring out all of these fine details in the clothing, in the grill of the amplifier, in the fabric of the jeans. Huh. Relatively shallow depth of field it looks like there. Not sure why that is. I was shooting reasonably wide and I don't think I was stopped wide open. But anyway, moving on. That looks like about all I put in, maybe a bit of contrast. I'm not sure I've even used soft contrast there. I don't think there's really any need with this image. We're not going for a tonality type image. We're going for a crisp and detailed type image. So I probably didn't use much, if any, of that. And I wouldn't have used any vignetting or burn edges because it doesn't make sense on white seamless. So, why have I duplicated it? Well, basically to directly edit without being destructive. I didn't produce or create a uh, double curves adjustment layer because there just wasn't enough to do, so I just duplicated the layer and used the burn tool directly on this reflection right here, darken it up a bit, increase the contrast a little, just so it's slightly more visible, increase the cool factor of that shiny tileboard floor. And then that is the image largely done. All that's left to do is get rid of this background. Fortunately, because this is a monotone background, single color, no real variation 
that's easily discernible, no lighting graduations or patterns or anything like that. It's just nice flat lighting on it. Then all I have to do is color pick a color off this background wherever I feel like doing that, probably slightly away from the edge in case it gets a little darker over here. If we do it, say right there, while I'm on the brush tool, hold Alt and click. There we go. 247 out of 255, so almost white, but not white. And then I can just bring in another empty layer and paint out the background. Simple. No stretching, no clone stamping, no copying and pasting free transforming, whatever, all that manipulation you have to do when you have a more interesting background, much easier on simple white seamless. So that's the image basically complete. I think all I've done now is where the reflection just sort of drops off the edge of the image. I didn't really like that it felt slightly unnatural to me, so I added a fade. If you think about the angle of uh, reflection off a reflective surface as you look more and more closer to yourself, less and less of the object is reflected, and you either see the object itself or whatever's underneath it. So that's basically just simple physics. It requires a fade to seem more natural and comfortable to the viewer's eye. Even if that's not technically what was physically real. We're recreating reality here, not accurately simulating it. So, that's it. Nice and simple. No need to go overboard with the processing when we're trying to keep it simple, classic. So, there you go. Thanks for watching.